What's going on everyone? Austin Jump please here and today we're gonna to be talking about how to beat the Elite Four and the champion Cynthia at Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. I have never ever covered how to actually beat the Elite Four or equivalent in previous Pokemon games, but this one deserves a video. My first time going through this, I lost twice until I came up with a really flawless strategy on how to beat her with very minimal effort. And I do recommend before taking my strategy into effect, maybe try it on your own and experience just how rough it can be. So I'm going to be going over three quintessential Pokemon to add to your team in order to beat Cynthia. I'm not going to use a starter. I'm not going to use anything with good stats. I'm just going to use three very easy to get Pokemon, very easy to evolve Pokemon. And I'm just going to go with that. Maybe a few things here and there and maybe a little cheese, maybe a little cheese. I like me some cheese. Big fan of a nice sharp cheddar. Uh, cheesemongers, where are you at? There's pretty much five main points that I'm doing for this video. One is going to be the Pokemon that I'm choosing. Now, you're welcome to choose whatever Pokemon you want. If you've built a balanced team up, well, then you should be able to defeat the Elite Four and Cynthia. But if you're having trouble, I'm going to recommend three Pokemon. I'm just going to pick three whatever else Pokemon that I know you can have as well. And then, yeah, that's going to be the team I'm choosing. I'm going to go over the Pokemon that we're going to be facing, which are very, very well built Pokemon. I'm going to go over what EVs are. EVs or effort values are essentially how well a Pokemon is trained in a specific trait, attack, defense, special attack, HP, so on and so forth. Defeating wild or trained Pokemon of specific species award you specific EVs. And I'm going to be focusing mainly on special attack, attack, and speed, which is going to be useful for the three Pokemon I'm going to be catching and the three random Pokemon I'm choosing on my team. And then I'm going to be going over the moves that I'm choosing and why I'm choosing them. Then I'm going to be going over the items I'm buying. And then we're going to be going over the strategy, which includes properly defeating them or just cheesing it, whatever you want to do. I went to the Grand Underground and went through all the rare Pokemon down there, which I did make the video on the rare Pokemon in the Grand Underground. And it should be noted that this is what I'm going to be doing from the eight badge point. So I grabbed myself a Gibble, a Houndoom, a Rosalia. I have one of the Lake Spirits, doesn't really matter. I have my Box Legendary, they're not going to do too much. And I grabbed my Shiny Bidoof, he's level four. He's going to be, he's going to be for a meme later, trust me. It's going to be really, really good. It's going to be really good and you're going to love it. Thanks to a very early date of mine, we have the exact teams that all of the Elite Four and Cynthia are using. And there's something really important here. All of them are competitive. Every single one of these, pretty much at least three perfect IVs. Some of them have five perfect IVs. All of the champions team have five perfect IVs and then one IV of zero. Full EV trained. Okay, now I'm not going to get into how to build a competitive team here. Also, they have very complimenting items and they have great moves. Why do so many of these have Ice Beam and Ice Fang and Thunderbolt? If you play the originals, these are much better Pokemons, much more better. Like, dude, come on. Steelix has a life orb and a full physical team. Full attack EVs, full attack IVs. I did that backwards, adamant nature. Here's a real kicker. Heracross is holding a flame orb with guts and facade. What? <laughs> a Poudon is holding a Chesto Berry and it has rest, so it's Chesto Resto. Wish Cash is only weak to grass type Pokemon and it has Ice Beam. Gastrodon is only weak to grass type Pokemon and has Sludge Bomb. It's a very, very well-rounded team, okay? All of them have fantastic coverage. This is not your pushover. This is not your Gen 1 Elite Four. This is not your Sword and Shield Elite Four where you're just gonna continuously sweep through for money. I'm, I made some notes just based off of what everything is weak to. And then I came up with these three Pokemon. Being Houndoom, you can use Infernape. I'm just gonna be using Houndoom just because I can give it Sludge Bomb and Dig. Oh, why did I think Houndoom can learn Dig? Nope, definitely can't learn Dig. Okay, Roserade needs to be fast, and Garchomp has to have Aerial Ace. Also, 
I think Bidoof can learn Taunt, and that's gonna be him for a meme. This is the team that I have. I have Houndoom, Miss Spirit, Rosalia, I caught a Gibble and I used a rare candy, now it's a good bite, and I have a Dialga. For some reason, Gibble, Goodbite, and Garchomp do not learn Earthquake via level up. In fact, the most powerful ground move that they learn via level up is Dig, which I kind of want to keep Dig. It has a fun situational use against two Pokemon that you no know, high jump kick, and oh, I love it when they keep going and crash. So let's go get the TM for Earthquake, which of course could be in the underground at random times on random days, but there's always one guaranteed. Route 206, so let's fly to Orberg, and instead of going onto the bike route, we're going to be going underneath it all the way to the end, but we're not going in the cave, we're going on the left side of the cave. But not over there, instead we're going to head down here, and there's a hidden entrance, found it. And down here is just a fun little area, there's actually wild gibbles here, they're very low level compared to what we get in the Grand Underground, and then there's just sort of a maze that we just need to go through this whole area and you know, go to specific places, and once you make your way to the end, you get the TM for Earthquake, which that is our main goal here. I honestly don't really care about any of the other items. They might be good, they might not be good, although in this playthrough, I'm specifically trying to avoid grabbing every single thing and trainer until absolutely necessary. I know there's also gonna be some people who are really mad at how I just executed all of that. Can I, can I not grab this? Get off the bike, game. Do I, do I need to use flash to grab an item? How do I how do I grab this? Why can I not grab this item? Okay, my competitive spirit use flash. What is going on? Why can I not grab Earthquake? <laughs> this is like a quintessential part of my team right now. Oh, there we go. Apparently, I need to use flash in in here and then rezone. That was weird. All right, next up, we are going to go to the Iron Islands because I skipped it in this. Uh, which, if you don't know, here in Candelave City, you speak to this guy and you get to go to the Iron Islands as soon as you get access to the town, which is cool. There is sort of a side quest slash escort quest, and the reward for that is getting a Riolu egg, but I just want the shiny stone from here for my Roserade. Which, the shiny stone is in the last room. I need to do the entire thing. Cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, tutorial, how to get Riolu. I'm not even gonna use Lucario on my team. I mean, I could. Actually, nah, nah, just the three, just the three. We'll stick with the three. Oh great, I already have the TM for Sludge Bomb. I got that at the Team Galactic Hideout Stealth Rock that I'm pretty sure we got for uh, the first gym ever. I'm gonna give that to Miss Spirit. That's gonna be Miss Spirit's only job is to set up stealth rocks. And until I give Houndoom a better uh, dark special move, I'm just gonna be using Shadow Ball. Okay, I just need the TM for Giga Drain now for my Roserade, because I taught it Solar Beam, but I need a move that's one uh, turn. And here on Route 205, there's this sneaky boy all the way down here, Giga Drain, beautiful. If I break this rock, yep, there's that TM I need. That's gonna be Aerial Ace, that's important. And yep, it's right down there, right down there. See it down there? Yep, there we go, great. And I'm pretty sure Bidoof can learn it. If Bidoof can learn it, then the meme is gonna be great. Yep, Bidoof can learn it, perfect. All right, and that's, that's my team. My team is done now. Great, now that my Pokemon are evolved and they know some useful moves, I'm now going to be grinding up my money and I'm gonna be doing it in a very special way. So, goodbye to physical attacker. Everything else is a special attacker. I'm gonna keep these four Pokemon in the party and we're gonna grind up our money. I'm gonna use the Versus Seeker just like I did in my money tutorial. This lady on the right, when I defeat her, I'm going to get special attack effort values, EVs, and when I defeat the gentleman, I'm going to get one attack EV. So, I'm just gonna grind the woman over and over and over and over and get my money up and get my special attack EVs up. I'm gonna be here for a while, like at least a half hour on her alone. It's also worth mentioning that at this time, I do have Pokerus, which is a very rare virus. I think it's like a three in 32,000 chance, but you can spread it amongst people. I got mine from Philly. He got it twice randomly. And yeah, I'm just gonna be knocking out this rose raid over and over. While we are continuing with our EV training, we want some speed EVs on pretty much everyone. I think it's this guy 
who has the six magic carp. I'm pretty sure it's him. Ah, I found him. It was a guy just to the right. So each magic carp you defeat is going to be one speed EV. If you have Pokeris, it's two. So this entire battle is gonna give me 12, which is pretty neat. Cause I want more speed EVs for my team. After spending a substantial amount of time there, I'm going to head to the Veilstone City department store. But I should mention that right now we're doing is called EV training. Alternatively, with the money that you get, you could come here and you could buy proteins which increase the attack EVs and stuff like that, although they are very expensive. If you have all the EVs that you need, you should be good. Also, for this strategy, I'm gonna definitely recommend to pick up some X items. Like 20 speeds, 10 attacks, 10 uh, regular defenses, and maybe like, I don't know, 10, spe 10x special defenses. And that should be all you need if you wanna cheese it, which I'm gonna explain cheesing it later. Speaking to these ladies over here, we have the option to pick up some TMs. I do need a swords dance. That's going on Garchomp, and that's gonna be very important. A couple ice beams. I already have a Psychic and a Dazzling Gleam. And yeah, that should be good for now. Fantastic, now we made it to the Pokemon League. Let's talk about all the items we're going to be purchasing. Don't really care about full heals. Instead of full heals, I would use full restores. Let's buy 40 of them. Full restores are gonna be important. If you don't wanna buy Hyper Potions for 1200 for 120 HP, you go buy some of the Moo Moo Milks. And the Moo Moo Milks are right above Salacion Town at Route 210, that's the cafe cabin. That's where you could buy the milks. I don't know if they're called the Moo Moo Milks. Because I've made a butt ton of money and I taught you how to make a butt ton of money, let's go ahead and buy 30 Hyper Potions, why not? And if we're in a sticky situation, 20 Max Potions. And then I also like to grab some Super Potions. You know, if I'm healing up between battles, you know, it's nice to have them as just, you know, I, I, I don't need that much health filled in and you know what let's grab some regular potions too and revives revives are gonna be a big muy importante i'm always gonna need revives might as well buy a bunch of them right now and you know what i'm gonna go back on what i said before we'll buy 10 full heals because why not right oh i think i picked up a tm that he can use yes he can learn dark pulse fantastic Sludge Bomb was always just a placeholder move for us anyways. Made a few changes from my original team to what we're gonna end up doing and something that I'm gonna recommend you do, I recommend you doing it from the start of the game and I've talked about this, I don't think I've ever made a video. So Hound Doom over here is special attack over attack, almost twofold, right? And he's dark and fire. I'm gonna change the order of his moves. This special attack flamethrower and this special attack dark pulse are stabbed same type attack bonus so you could kind of think of this 80 as being times one and a half so it's 120. even though this shadow ball is 80 because that stab i like to put it above there and this flame charge my physical attack is about half of my special attack so in theory in my head it's like 25 because it's only half as powerful and then times 1.5 so it's a power of 37. I'm just using that to increase speed one stage. I don't even know if I'm going to use that as a move. But I like to do that for all of my Pokemon in here. So Solar Beam is my most powerful move because it's the same type of attack bonus. So 120 and 75 being stab, 80 being special but not stab, and then ingrain at the bottom. Earthquake is stab. I don't have a dragon move and surprisingly dragon isn't that... It's weird that in this game dragon and ice aren't the best against the Elite Four. Know what I mean? So this crunch is 80, Aerial Ace is 60. I'm gonna move it above there. Just so at first glance, I know my most powerful moves. Know what I'm saying? This Dialga, I just don't have anything for that last spot of Slash. I was gonna teach it Thunderbolt, but like literally nothing here is weak to electric except for Melodic at the very end. So I'm not really too worried. But yeah, that's how I like to set up my entire team. And Bidoof is there just to do taunt one time. It's going to be hysterical, trust me. So I'm going to be leading with the Mispirit going first just because it can set up stealth rocks and then it remains in battle until it gets knocked out. And then I swap into one of these three. That's the reason I picked up those revives. And uh, yeah, hope you're ready because we are. you are about to go into the post game, my friends. You're, you're gonna be the very best, like 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 no one ever was. Great. Regardless of having auto saves on or off, I always recommend dropping down a hard save before entering the next room. The last room, you uh, you can't save in front of them, so you should always save before going into the room. That's gonna catch you off guard, because the first four rooms, you can walk in and save right in front of them. First battle against Aaron, who is the bug trainer. Let's go A-Drive. 
So if you're not too familiar with how Stealth Rocks works, it basically is an entry hazard that you're going to drop it down and then Pokemon are going to take damage based on how weak they are to the rock element. And considering Aaron over here is going to be setting up or sending out bugs for most to all of the entire team, almost all of them are going to take heavy damage from Stealth Rocks. So I'm a spirit, set up Stealth Rocks, that's your one job. Fantastic. It doesn't matter if you get knocked out right now. Dust Ox has Light Screen, Moonlight, Bug Buzz, and Toxic. So Bug Buzz is going to be super effective against me. Toxic can badly poison me. Moonlight to heal itself and Light Screen to lower the damage to special attacks, right? So I'm just going to do Psychic and knock this out or have it knock me out. I'm kind of indifferent either way. Bug Buzz, that's going to do a lot of damage. If I was holding a... Oh, I thought that would do a lot more damage. And it has Black Sludge to heal itself. So... This thing, it's going to be bulky, and honestly, if it lasts five turns, I'm cool with that. Because, you know, that's the five turns of the uh, the light screen. There's the badly poison. Again, Miss Spirit's one job just to set up stealth rocks. Oh, I just noticed a little lamp in the back. Has the little rings going up and little butterflies coming out of it. That's so cool looking. And there's the full restore. I was expecting that. Honestly, I'm really okay with him using full restores on a Pokemon that could heal itself if it wanted to, know what I mean? So Dustox's whole strategy is kind of just to stall me out. And there's a Moonlight, like I said, it's here to stall me out. And Light Screen just wore off, and next turn I'm probably going down to the Poison, so this might knock it out, and it does, perfect. Light Screen is gone, I'm probably going to be knocked out due to the Poison. Shucks, my spirit lived on 6 health. Oh, but that's right, I have it set on Swap. So now I'm going to send in Houndoom who's going to be super effective against three of his Pokemon. And it's going to do, oh, look at that. There's the pointed stones into Beautyfly. Now we're just going to do Flamethrower. We're faster. This is going to be a one-hit KO. Bye, Beautyfly. So now Heracross is going to come out, and I'm sending out Garchomp. Heracross is holding a Flame Orb, and it has Guts, and it has Facade. So once it's burned, its Facade is going to do a lot of damage. It also has Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Brick Break. However, he's four times weak to flying. He gets that little bit of damage from the rocks when he comes in, and I'm just gonna go for an Aerial Ace, and that should be a one-hit KO. Beautiful. Up next is Vespaquin, who's holding a berry and is four times weak to rock, so its health is gonna go down to half, and then it's gonna eat its berry as soon as it comes in. Yep, down to half. Eats the berry. Vespaquin's only two times weak to flying type, but that should, oh, I thought that would actually do more. It's going to do acrobatics. Yeah, Garchomp is just fine. He's probably going to use a full restore here, so I'm going to go for a sword stance. And there's the full restore predict. There's my sword stance. Now we're going to be doing a lot more damage, and that's going to be setting up very well for their ace, which is Drapion. Beautiful. Drapion has Cross Poison, Night Slash, Earthquake, and X Scissor. Its ability is Sniper, which increases crit rates, and it has Scope Lens, which increases crit rates. So there's a very good chance it's always going to be doing crits, and it's only weak to ground, with a Sword Stance and us having Earthquake, and us... I thought we would be faster. We're not faster. But we can still take a hit, and that was a crit, and here's the Earthquake, and we're gonna knock it out. Fantastic, and that's the first member of the Elite Four down. Bye-bye, Aaron. It's just a good habit to be in that soon as you are done with the battle before you even move is when you're actually going to be healing up your team. And also we're going to save in this room before going into the next room. All right, up next is Bertha. Bertha uses, I think the whole idea is ground type Pokemon. Four of their Pokemon are ground type. The fifth is pure rock type. And they're going to start with Quagsire. Their Quagsire has water absorb, so it may swap out and be ready to intercept a water type move, although I don't think we are using any. It has leftovers, recover, so it's going to be healing itself. Toxic to badly poison you, earthquake, and surf. As always, we start with stealth rocks. And there's the surf. Yeah, that's not doing a lot of damage to us. Now, neither of my attacks are super effective against this thing, and it's beefy. It doesn't really make a difference. I mean, I could go for an Ice Beam and maybe get a Freeze off. That'd be funny. That's a three hit KO. I'm not taking this thing out. Yeah, there's the Recover. We're not winning this interaction. But we have the stones up. The Spirit's only chop. I really wasn't expecting to win that interaction. She did not use a full restore. I thought she would have. So Roserade is actually going to be carrying us this entire battle. 
Pseudo Wudo is coming out. It has Rock Head, which powers up the power of head-based moves, of which it has Head Smash. It also has Double Edge, Sucker Punch, and Low Kick. It's a pure rock type, and it is holding a citrus berry to recover a little bit of health. So here's my Rosa Raid, and it's on half health because I predicted wrong and I got knocked out. So turn one, we're going to go for Giga Drain on the Pseudo Wudo. Fantastic. Pseudo Wudo was defeated, and we gained back a whole bunch of health. Ooh, Dialga wants to learn Aura Sphere. Yeah, sure, that could replace Slash. And now Wish Cash is going to be coming out. Wish Cash is only weak to grass, and it's holding a Rindo Berry. I think that decreases the power of a super effective grass type move, but we're going to be going for that Giga Drain. Yep, there's the Berry. And we still knocked it out with one hit. Up next is going to be Golem, who is sturdy. Rock Polish, Heavy Slam, Earthquake, Stone Edge, and it's going to be holding Soft Sand. Typically what I think it likes doing, it likes taking advantage of Sturdy and turn one doing Rock Polish. That way it becomes really fast and tries to sweep you using Stone Edge or Earthquake. But the whole purpose of the Stealth Rocks is to break the Sturdy so Golem can't even do that. And lastly is going to be the Ace, which is Hapowdon, which has Sand Stream, so it's going to be kicking up a Sandstorm as soon as it comes in here. It has a Chesto Berry, it has Rest so it can recover its health and its status condition and then immediately wake up. It has Ice Fang and Earthquake. I'm obviously fearing that Ice Fang, and that's the reason it's important that Roserade is very fast. So we outspeed it, and we knock it out in one hit. How beautiful is that? As always, you want to heal and save before you even move. Here is Flint, who is the quote-unquote Fire-type Elite 4 member. Even though of his entire team, he only has two Fire-type Pokémon, which in the original games Diamond and Pearl were the only two Fire-types. Infernape and Rapidash. First up, I have Mesperit, who's going to do the same thing it always does. It does Stealth Rocks. Iron Tail is going to hit me for not a lot of damage. And there is the Stealth Rocks. Great. And now I'm just going to do Psychic. It went for Hypnosis. It missed. I think two hits should take it out. Oh no, the Hypnosis landed. What are you going to do? Another Iron Tail that's going to be mediocre? Oh look, it's Iron Tail. That's mediocre. Oh, I woke up turn one. That's great. There's the Psychic for the KO. Again, it didn't matter if Miss Spirit got knocked out or not. Next up is Steelix, and for that, I'm going to be bringing out Garchomp. Now, Steelix has Sheer Force and a Life Orb. Sheer Force makes it so that any move that has a secondary effect, the move is going to be more powerful, and the secondary effect cannot happen. He has Thunder Fang, Fire Fang, Iron Tail, and Crunch, which all have secondary effects. Instead, none of those secondary effects happen. They're all 30% stronger, and the Life Orb makes it stronger. He has the most physical defense in the entire game. I'm sorry, what just happened there? Steelix is going to use Iron Tail. It's going to miss. I'm already a plus two in attack. I'm going to go for Earthquake. And it's down. Now, Low Punny is going to be coming out. Low Punny has Leftovers, Cute Charm, Mirror Coat, High Jump Kip, Quick Attack, and Fire Punch. If I still had Dig right now, I would be using Dig to hopefully have it High Jump Kick, keep going, and crash but I don't, so I'm just gonna knock it out with Earthquake instead. All right, next up is Drifblim, and this is what Bidoof was for. Bidoof is for the memes. All right, Drifblim has Unburden. It's holding a berry to regain a little bit of health. Its four attacks are Strength Sap, Minimize, Baton Pass, and Will-O-Wisp. I think its overall objective is to use Minimize and then Baton Pass out. We're gonna use Taunt. It's not going to be able to attack us, so instead, all it can do is struggle. So I'm going to swamp Bidoof out now, and I'm going to bring Garchomp back out. You don't have to do this. I did it for the lols. But there's no moves left, and there's the struggle. I'm sorry. I find this hysterical. Now, I am going to do a Swords Dance just to get my attack back up for the Ace. And it's probably not even needed, but better have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Infernape's a little scary because it has close combat, which is 100% accuracy, but drops its defense. But it's stupid fast, and it also has a priority move with Mach Punch. It also has Fire Punch and Thunder Punch for coverage, and it has Iron Fist, its hidden ability to boost up the power of its fist-based moves. If Driftblim did get off the Baton Pass, that's a reason I have Aerial Ace here. The Stealth Rocks already broke its Focus Sash, because it has a Focus Sash. And if I live the close combat, which I think I am at this amount of health, then I am going to knock out with the Earthquake. And we live the close combat. If it was a crit, that would be really, really close. 
But yeah, defense fell, and that's the reason it's holding the focus sash. Doesn't matter, because the sash was broken, and it's dead. And Bidoof did a great job. Yes, he did, buddy. It's now time for the final member of the Elite Four, which is Lucian. Lucian is a Psychic-type Elite Four member. Lucian, who I think is a male. Lucian's team is very, uh, very unique. All right, up first is his Mr. Mime, who's holding light clay, which increases the duration of screens. Mr. Mime knows both light screen and reflect, that's its main job. And then it has both of its stabs, Psychic and Dazzling Gleam. He is now a Psychic and Fairy type when Fairy was introduced. And uh, its ability is Filter, which decreases the power of super effective moves by 25%. So of course we're gonna start off with the stones. It's gonna go for the light screen to increase its special defense to the team. And now the rough part is it lasts eight turns. So it's your option of what you wanna do. If you wanna to try to stall out the screens, that's kind of why I'm keeping my spirit out here. I've also noticed that it didn't set up reflect. So apparently, oh, we got the freeze. <laughs> Oh, and it thought out turn one. Yeah, that's what I get, because I, I woke up from sleep turn one. Now here's the rough space. I did give Houndoom Shadow Ball for this exact reason, but with the light screen up, it's not gonna do a lot of damage. And then also for Garchomp and Roserade, it do, it's both of its stabs are super effective against us. Roserade is also a special attacker, so we're definitely not taking out in one hit. Even though it has a super effective move against Garchomp, it could probably one-shot me. I'm fairly certain I'm faster, and I'm fairly certain Earthquake is gonna take it down in one hit without a Reflect Up. So we're gonna do that. And we do take it down in one hit, fantastic. We played into the fact that they didn't set up the Reflect. If they set up Reflect but not Light Screen, I probably would've went into Houndoom with the Ghost-type attack. Here's the thing about Metacham. Its ability is Pure Power, which doubles its attack. And it's holding a Muscle Band, which increases the power of its physical moves by 10%. And it has Zen Headbutt, High Jump Kick, Thunder Punch, and Ice Punch. Houndoom, if he did have Dig, which I thought for some reason he could have, would have annihilated this thing. But being faster than Metacham, we should be able to get the Shadow Ball off, and I think it's going to take it out in one hit. We are faster. We do land the Shadow Ball. It did not take it down in one hit. Oh, wow. Oh, because the light screen is still up. All right, that was a bad predict on my part, but it's okay. Because we also have Garchomp, who has Aerial Ace. And that's the KO. Beautiful. And light screen wore off. That's great news. Alakazam has a life orb, so it loses a little bit of health every time that it does an attack. But it doesn't because it has Magic Guard. So just, it's more powerful. It has Nasty Plot, which increases its special attack. It has Psychic, Future Sight, and Shockwave. So for that reason, we're keeping Garchomp out here. Alakazam is stupid fast. However, it is notoriously frail. And that's the reason we kept Crunch on Garchomp. There's the nasty plot he's trying to set up. Special attack rose sharply. There's the Crunch. And that's the one hit KO on Alakazam. Up next is going to be Girafferig, who is a normal and psychic type. It has Sap Sipper, so if you try to do a grass type attack, it's not going to do any damage. And I have seen Lucian swap in Giraffe Rig to take that attack. It has a Mental Herb, it knows Light Screen, Psychic, Thunderbolt, and Trick Room. So it's designed to be slow, and he's only weak to Bug and Dark. And that's the reason we have Crunch. In fact, after this, we're going to be having the Ace, which is Bronzong. And I'm getting a little worried about this. I know that. This giraffe rig has nothing super powerful against me, and it is going to be able to get that trick room up, so I am going to go for the sword stance now. There's the trick room. It didn't matter. Either this was going to get trick room up or Bronzong was. Now we're going to be going for the crunch. Now giraffe rig is faster. It does a psychic. We're going to eat that. No problem. Nom, nom, nom. Nice little snack. And there's the crunch. Another snack. And that's the one-hit KO on giraffe rig. And last but not least is going to be Bronzong. Who has Levitate, so he's immune to ground-type attacks. He's holding a Citrus Berry for health to get back. He knows Gyro Ball, Earthquake, Payback, and Trick Room. Bronzong is going to be weak to Ghost, Fire, and Dark, and that's the reason that I had uh, Houndoom. However, knowing that he knows Earthquake, it's a little bit of a tough space. So I'm just going to go for Garchomp's Crunch, and I don't think it's going to take it out, but we should live this no problem. Yeah, we can live two of those no problem. 
And we took it out in one hit. Beautiful. Stop. Do not move. Do not move. Because as soon as you walk through that door, you do not have the chance to save again. So you want to do all your healing and your saving before you walk through that door. It caught me off guard my first time, and that's the reason I've been giving you the disclaimer this entire time. So here is Cynthia, the champion. Yes, you, you met her throughout, you know, the entire game and stuff, and you had no idea she was the champion. Whoa, spoilers from 14 years ago, whenever the game came out. Anyway, Cynthia has a very difficult team. She has six Pokemon, Spiritomb, Rosary, Gastrodon, Lucario, Melodic, and Garchomp. Has fantastic coverage, and uh, is a little rough. That's guaranteed. There's also a very good chance that this is going to be your Pokedex entry for Melodic and maybe also Spiritomb. And there's kind of two ways to win this battle in my mind. There's, you know, playing it a little bit more legitimately and playing it a little bit more cheesily. And I'm going to explain that momentarily. Anyways, first up is Spiritomb, who in their original games had no weaknesses, now is only weak to Fairy. I'm going to start with the Stealth Rocks and let's throw a Flash on there, why not? Spiritomb is holding a berry to recover health. It knows Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse, Psychic, and Sucker Punch. So it knows three special moves and a physical move, but Sucker Punch will only make damage with you if you are going to be using an attacking move that turn. Cool. We're now going to be bringing out Garchomp and trying to go for a sweep here. Now, it can really only be achieved if you have your speed increased. So using an X speed right here and then using Swords Dance, you can kind of sweep the whole team. Alternatively, and I'm going to be showing this in the top left corner, you could just spam a whole bunch of X special defenses and then defenses and then attacks and then speeds and then just sweep her entire team. So unedited in the top left corner is going to be if you want to do that strategy. And I'm going to talk you through playing it a little bit more legitimately. It's up to you on what you want to do. If you want to try this out and it doesn't go well, and then you want to try, you know, cheesing it just to get through the Elite Four, you're more than welcome to. Anyways, after two of those hits with me setting up, I'm a little low on health, so I'm going to be using my first ever potion during battle, which I think that's pretty fair. She gets two full restores. I should be able to heal up too, right? Spiritomb being only weak to fairy is sort of neutral to a lot of things, so I'm just going to hit it with an earthquake now. Nice, and that's a one-hit KO on the Spiritomb. Now, she does have two Pokemon that kind of scare Garchomp a little bit. She has both Roserade and Gastrodon. Who their stab. Oh, and Melodic. Okay, three Pokemon that could take out Garchomp pretty easily. Melodic has Marvel Scale and a Flame Orb to activate Marvel Scale. It has Recover, Mirror Coat, Ice Beam, and Scald. If you're not familiar, Marvel Scale makes it so if it's under a status condition, it gets an additional 50% defense, and that's the reason it has the Flame Orb and only special attacks and Mirror Coat. But turn one, you're going to do a lot of physical damage. And that's why I'm going to go for Earthquake on Garnchop to hopefully get... We did not get the one-hit KO. Oh, this Ice Beam is going to really hurt. Yes, it is. Okay. So even with the plus two in attack and speed, we were not able to take out that Melodic in one hit. I'm going to be bringing out Roserade for this. Roserade, uh, she's probably going to do a full restore. So I'm going to go for the Giga Drain. Yep, there's the full restore, which does remove the burn. However, the flame orb is going to come back at the end of the turn. Giga Drain does about half. That's good. The question is, are we going to outspeed it? And are we going to live its ice beam? We are. And beautiful, we could take down Melodic with two hits. Now is Gastrodon. Gastrodon has Storm Drain to absorb water type attacks. It has leftovers, Scald, Earthquake, Sludge Bomb, and Rock Tomb. It is four times weak to grass. So I'm going to go for a Giga Drain. And it goes down in one hit. Next up is their Roserade. And we are going to be bringing out Houndoom for this. Their Roserade has Poison Point, so physical attacks will cause poison to your Pokemon. It has Expert Belt. It knows Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, and Energy Ball. We're going to go for that turn one Flamethrower. We are not faster than Roserade. Sludge Ball does heavy damage to us. but we take it down in one hit, beautiful. Lucario, who has Inner Focus, Aura Sphere, Dragon Pulse, Flash Cannon, and Nasty Plot. It is a very dangerous Pokemon, and that's the reason that we have Flamethrower on Houndoom. I don't think we're gonna outspeed it. We don't, we're taken down by Dragon Pulse. 
Honestly, I pretty much have Garchomp set up for this. I didn't expect Melodic to take us down like that, so we are going to be sending out our Meat Shield, because Roserade is not going to do anything to this Lucario, that's for sure. And uh, we, we need to use a Max Revive or just a Revive on the Garchomp over here. My Garchomp, Earthquake, we don't outspeed it. I thought we would. But we live a Dragon Pulse, and that's good. And there's the Earthquake. Is he going to live that? Nope. And Cynthia's last Pokemon is Garchomp, which is going to sh outshine your Garchomp in every single way possible. It is Jolly, full attack, full speed, full IVs and everything except for special attack. You are not going to be able to take it down with your Garchomp. You might live an attack, maybe. Nope, not from a Dragon Claw. So our chance to take down this Garchomp is going to be our Roserade, and that's the reason that we gave it Dazzling Gleam. It's going to use Earthquake. That's going to be neutral. We are not going to live that. Okay, my dad, going to take this out. By the way, how's that top left doing? Oh, it already beat Cynthia, did it? Uh, which, as you probably realized, you know, I'm currently narrating this and doing chops and clips and everything, and that top left is done. So, if this happened to you when facing Cynthia, you may choose to do that top left option with spamming X special defense to get that spirit tomb, healing it up, using the X defense, the attack, the speed, and then sweeping her entire team. Because otherwise, oh, that guard chomp is really rough. By the way, fun fact, when you reface Cynthia, that guard chomp is going to be level 88, being tied for the highest level trained Pokemon you're going to fight by a trainer outside of towers and stuff like that. Uh, only tied with Red's Pikachu from Gold, Silver, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. So, it's up to you on how you want to take down Cynthia. If you want to grind up the team until you're much higher level than her, and then try to do this, go for it. Or now, if you just want to do the thing I did in the top left, and just use a whole bunch of X items, that's up to you. Is using a whole bunch of X items cheap? Yes. But, is her having competitively trained Pokemon before you're able to have competitively trained Pokemon cheap? Yes. It's up to you on how you want to do it, but that's how you're going to be able to beat the Elite Four and Cynthia in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Guys, if you found this guide helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you made it this far in this very long video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I think I've earned it. Until next time, Austin John out.